The United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, has named seven young scientists, engineers and entrepreneurs from across the globe as its 2020 Young Champions of the Earth. The UN's highest environmental honour is awarded to seasoned environmental leaders whose actions are having a transformative impact on the environment. The regional winner for Africa is a Kenyan materials engineer and founder of Jenge M M Makers, uh, Nzambi Mate, who recycles plastic into paving slabs. She joins me now via Zoom from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Congratulations on this recognition. Uh, what does it mean for you? Um, it's a great honor. It's a great honor and a huge a uh, moral booster for me and my team because it's um it's 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 a feeling that uh, as someone else has seen the hard work that we've been doing and uh, recognizes the fact that yes we have done uh, some good steps and we have more to go tell us about the journey to these slabs i mean you studied uh, what physics and uh, uh, applied physics pure and applied physics uh, how did you get from that to uh, a materials engineer and uh, bringing this innovation into paving? Um, so, um, the aspect of uh, applied physics is there's a lot of um, ex um, exposure into the materials world, and that got sparked uh, the interest from the academic side of things. However, the biggest uh, spark when it comes to the actualization of the project and the solution came uh, when I was just here in Nairobi, um, walking around and lingering around just like any other youth. And I felt to the point, I felt, I felt the need that it was time I stopped sitting at the sidelines and, and waiting for other people to do something about plastic and let me just do something. And the idea that uh, the idea that drove um, that drove the the building of the solution was first of all the solution had to be practical because uh, living in Kenya practicality is everything. And second of all, it had to be sustainable and third, it had to be affordable. And so we saw the best way we can impact that is if we found a, a link into the construction slash building space. And hence, we started making the pavers. Has creating sustainable solutions something that's always motivated you? Because in, in, in many ways, this really has been why you've been recognized by uh, the United Nations. Yes, I think uh, sustainability should be a driving factor and a huge decision making a factor um, in the decisions we make both in the private and public sectors and also within the personal um, state of affairs. Um, the, because Put, talking, talking in the context of environment is we take a lot from the environment. Our, our whole existence essentially is derived from our interaction with the environment. If you, if you look at it from, from the environment's point of view, from the water and the fauna uh, space and all that other integrational, the aspects of human integration with the environment. And so sustainability should be a key driving factor. And so that that for me was not something that i had to think about it was just something that had to be there and so the other aspect was okay so how how do we make sustainability practical because um in kenya and i can i can project in most african countries sustainability tends to be a kind of far-fetched um solution or rather a far-fetched idea or concept but the whole idea was to make it as practical and as applicable to the society i live in as much as i, as I could well let's talk about these uh, unique uh, bricks that you use for paving uh, and you're making sure that uh, no plastic actually goes to waste because you're using the very end of the story in terms of uh, manufacturing plastic and the bits that never get used for recycling, that's the bits you're taking up. How do you then take this yes. and make a brick? So as, as, we, as you well put, we get from two sources. We have what you call the post-industrial and the post-consumer. 
And so the post-industrial is that which, uh, after the factories have produced the the packaging, uh, the packaging products, whatever whichever it is, there is that waste that they could they cannot uh, reprocess again in the machinery. We get that. That's what we call the post-industrial. And then we have the post-consumer. Essentially, once you use the packaging uh, product through maybe soft drinks or whatever. Um, product was packaged it is it's you take you the plastic is taken to the dump site and then the dump site the uh, the garbage or rather the garbage truck then the garbage truck collectors take it to the recyclers then the recyclers uh, recycle or rather make pellets so that those pellets can be used to make other pl plastic uh, containers now during that process there is that waste which they cannot recycle anymore and so that's what we take so that's what mm. we term as post consumer um, waste so our goal is to be able to take the most lowest form of quality in terms of the whole plastic value chain, the lowest form, because we know that is that that is that which is, for the lack of a better word, worthless, and we turn that into a value asset mm. in our product in our production space. So that is the goal in terms mm. of sustainability in, in angle we're coming in. And this has been quite a journey. I mean, you built the machines themselves that manufacture uh, these products. So again, uh, uh, great engineering uh, that you've had to uh, do to make it happen. But the bricks themselves, how do they compare to perhaps the traditional concrete uh, uh, and uh, normal bricks uh, for paving? So the Jijenge pavers are not only stronger, but they're also lighter mm. and cheaper. So we have what we call the triple threat. First of all, the stronger because the aspect of using uh, plastic as a binding agent is plastic gives the brick uh, more flexural strength compared to concrete pavers. And also in addition to that, it makes it less brittle. So essentially it has um, sm uh, lesser air pockets. So hence it has more compression strength. So that's in terms of the strength. The other one is in terms of the weight. So essentially a normal concrete paver, you have sand, you have ballast, you have cement, and then you have water. All these four elements have a weight implication to it. But in our in, in, in the Jijenge Pavers um, composition, we just have uh, an aggregate, which in this case uh, we use sand or ballast, and plastic. So plastic essentially performs as the binding agent mm. like cement in the concrete. So essentially that gives that also has a contribution towards the weight of the pavers, so essentially makes it, making it lighter. And then the third one is uh, uh, cheaper than, it's about 30% cheaper than, than the normal concrete pavers. And this is because we use the, the most lowest quality of plastic, which essentially is just, it's, it's in the value chain, it was normally just discarded. So essentially just scrapping off that and reprocessing it. So our goal is to be able, from Jijenge as a team, be able to always maintain those triple threats. Zambi, it's a quite an incredible story and uh, uh, it's no surprise that you've been recognized uh, by the UNEP uh, for, as one of the uh, uh, top young scientists, engineers in the world. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and uh, we certainly hope that uh, this kind of thinking uh, is something that becomes more commonplace across the continent. Thanks so much indeed for leading the way. Thank you so much and have a good day.